Israel says it is pursuing the top Hamas leaders in southern Gaza and have already killed five senior military leaders. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the IDF is surrounding the home of the man they believe is the mastermind behind the October 7th attacks. And as that war stretches on, the FBI now warning terror groups will likely use it to call for violence in the U.S. over the holidays. And that has Jewish and Muslim places of worship in, Bay, in the Bay Area on high alert. And joining me live right now to talk about this is Rabbi Jacqueline Mates Mushin from Temple Sinai in Oakland. So, well, today marks two months since the attack on Israel. So my first question is, how are you doing and, and how is your congregation doing at this time? Thank you. Uh, you're kind to ask. I think that there's a lot of folks that are still uh, in pain, a lot of folks that are still really worried and concerned about friends and family that are in Israel, and a lot of folks worried about uh, everything that's happening in Gaza and a lot of the innocent folks who are really caught in the crossfire. Uh, it's been a lot. And, and while the FBI and the CHP says there's no credible threats here in the Bay Area, what are your thoughts about the warning? And is your temple or do you know of any other temples that are taking measures? Every single temple I know as is taking uh, higher security measures, and we actually all have since October 8th. Um, just it is often the case that when things are happening in uh, Israel or in the Middle East, that there are repercussions here and ripples and um, folks who uh, want to, to carry out their frustrations and things on the local Jewish community or, or uh, local Muslim community as well. So um, we have been on high alert uh, in terms of our own security and our security measures. And as we enter the first day of Hanukkah, which is, of course, is at sundown, what are what are your hopes? What are your thoughts? You know, I think that I have been proud of my community and so many other folks in the Jewish community that it really feels like people want to stand up and be proud uh, of who we are and of what we stand for. Um, this is a time where we talk about finding light in the darkness, that we want to find those pieces of hope and those reasons that we keep moving on in a, in a positive way, feel uh, creating positive relationships with other folks and other communities, um, and just recognizing that, that things can get better, we can work to, to make them better. You talked about positive communications with other people in other community. What, what have you done to reach out to the other side, or even just to help educate people about what is happening over there? You know, we've tried a lot to um, talk with a lot of different kinds of organizations, um, whether that's, you know, school boards and city councils and, and those kinds of things. We've been in conversation with a lot of folks to both to understand what happens there, but even more important, how it affects the people here. And that when we do things like pass resolutions and we do things, you know, some of these protests and things, they actually don't have an effect on what's happening in the Middle East, but they do have a very, very strong effect uh, here and dividing people here. Um, so I think our work really is to, to recognize that those of us in the Bay Area Area, um, certainly in Oakland, that we are here together. This is our community. And one of the things we love about it is the fact that it is so diverse and that we need to make sure that what when we are expressing our feelings, when we're expressing our thoughts on these things, that we're sensitive to who is here in our community uh, with us uh, and uh, in order to make sure that there aren't lasting um, difficult feelings and, and um, hurt uh, that goes beyond this war. Rabbi, I know that a lot of people are still struggling, but hopefully today will be a day of celebration on, on the first day of Hanukkah. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And police are already patrolling the Bill Graham menorah. That's at Union Square. You see it right here, just in case. This is video from a previous lighting and that first candle that will be lit at 5 p.m. tonight. And of course, it's not just anti-Semitism on the rise since the war started, so is Islamophobia, including a group of college students who were recently shot in Vermont while just walking down a street. The FBI is warning about potential attacks applying to mosques as well. So we're joined now by Zara Bilu from the Council of American Islamic Relations, sometimes known as CARE. Uh, we like to mention before there are no credible threats here in the Bay Area specifically, but has your community faced Islamophobia? Phobia? Have you seen a rise? And do you know of any mosques, temples also that are preparing and, 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 and just preparing just in case something happens? Thank you so much for having me. We live in an environment where security concerns are every day for us. But since October 7th, we have seen an over 170 percent increase in complaints of experiences in Islamophobia, including violent hate crimes right here in the Bay Area, an assault in Monterey, a hit and run at Stanford, and, and more. And so mosques have been preparing. I recall sitting in meetings in October with mosques as this all began, 
They'd hired security. They were reviewing their video cameras. They were thinking about which doors need to stay open and closed at different times with an exponential increase in complaints of Islamophobia across the country prevention is is necessary and so mosques are doing what is important to protect their congregants and and of course this war is weighing heavy on a lot of people in a lot of different communities i need to ask how how are you doing and and how are your family and your friends and your community doing just a couple of hours ago i saw the news that one of the reporters that i follow in gaza um, had been killed by israeli forces every morning i wake up and i check with my friends who have family there to say how are you did your family make it through the night? It is, there are no words to describe what it's like to watch a genocide happening live on our phones and on our televisions and to know that it's happening without any accountability. We are all funding the murder of women, children, men of all ages. And it is beyond belief that it continues this long. And, and, and today marks two months since that war began. The latest estimates say at least 80 percent. I believe that's like 1.9 million people in Gaza have been displaced by the fighting. That likely uh, number is likely to rise. Uh, you had kind of mentioned this already, but what are you hearing from community members who may have family members that are still stuck in Gaza? There is this, you know, we're between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. We want to help those people get out and get to safety. But we also know that that's exactly what the Israeli government wants, is to take over the land in Gaza. And so every day we watch as they hold on to life and, and faith that the world will stop this. But it continues. And so, so too will our advocacy. So too will our cries for a permanent ceasefire now. You had mentioned a, a simple question that I think a lot of people in the community are asking yourself, even on the other side too, is, is how are you doing? How important is that question? It's one that we ask because we care about each other, but it's every time I've asked it or been asked it, we've struggled for the answer. Most of us in my community are waking up and watching the news, going to sleep watching the news, and offering condolences on a regular basis to people we know or friends of friends, reporters that we're following online. How do you, how are we? Like, how can we all be anything but heartbroken as we watch babies? being burned alive by our tax-funded weapons. I know it's a very difficult conversation, so I thank you for taking the time to sharing your thoughts and, and information on the war. So thank you very much, Zara from CARE.